Hey, it's Lane with WinRTSource.com. Today I'm going to show you the top 10 must-have apps for the Surface of 2014. First I want to show you Today, which is an advanced task management application. It syncs over the cloud, so you can have multiple Windows 8 devices or even a Windows Phone device syncing with that app. You can have multiple categories, and you can create tasks uh, that are very detailed. So you can see here I can change the folder that that goes into. There's multiple different priorities that you can set. Context. You can even create tags. And you can set specific levels of progress. You can set a reminder at a specific date and time. There is a frequency filter so that if that's a task that needs to repeat itself on a monthly or weekly or even daily basis and then you can add detailed notes. Finally, you can pin a task, a folder, or the entire app to your start screen to see live updates. Next, I want to show you here maps. These are high quality maps made by Nokia. It's a staple feature of Windows Phone. Uh, here maps feature excellent navigation uh, tools and uh, accurate maps for Windows Phone. You don't have navigation per se on the Windows 8 version, but there are a number of other awesome features. You can see here there are street level views similar to uh, Google Street, uh, street View. You can change the size of that menu there. You can take a look around and see different uh, places nearby or in the area that you're looking at if you want to find some place to eat, find some sort of entertainment, it's an extremely well-designed app. As you see, there are directions here, and in fact, they are turn by turn, but there is no voice navigation. Finally, there is a bit of a 3D element that you can see here. So it's very smooth, very quick. Highly recommend these maps. Next, I want to show you Reedy. Reedy is a Feedly-powered RSS reader, and it is absolutely the best one on the Windows Store, trust me tried all of them. All of these categories you see here were set up in Feedly. You can go through and browse an entire category or a specific feed. So I'm browsing my own website here. One of the options is to load up an internet browser version of the website, but you do have more reading friendly versions as well, like Readability and Instapaper. You can also share a, a link to the article with a few different, by a few different means, and then you can also open up the web browser. On the home screen, you can actually completely customize the look and feel of it, make the tiles any size that you want. I think that's really great. It also, you can change the orientation, whether it scrolls horizontally or vertically. You can pin a specific feed or a category or the entire app to your start screen. Next, let's take a look at OneNote. OneNote is an amazing note-taking application. It's absolutely perfect for students or professionals who need to take detailed notes, or even those that just like to keep their lives organized. As you can see here, uh, you can even add an Excel-like spreadsheet you can draw and you're able to change the color of the pen. There are lots of different custom customizations there that I won't go into. And then you can add photos either straight from your camera roll or from the camera. You can create numbered lists. When it comes to text editing, there are some very rich text editing features as well, like bold, italics, underline. You can, of course, change the color of the text or highlight the text as well. You can also change the indent level increase or decrease that or change the center left or right justification. It's simple to add a new page. As you're typing you'll see that there's a box that appears around that paragraph and what's great about that is that you can move it around or resize it. So if you want that column to be wider or more narrow so that you can fit more information on the screen uh, it's very simple to do that even with touch. Finally, I want to point out you can create any number of notebooks for different categories. Within that notebook, you can have sections and subsections and unlimited numbers of pages. 
Next, I want to talk to you about my absolute favorite Twitter app ever on any platform. It's called Tweetium, and it is available only for Windows 8.1 right now. As you can see, the interface is smooth and fluid and really takes advantage of the available screen real estate. You can pin any user's account right to the top bar there so that you can access it quickly. And it's very easy to reorder this in case you want to prioritize the items that show up there. It's simple to switch, in, switch between accounts and this is one of the few apps that allows you to manage multiple accounts on Windows 8. Of course you can add pictures or links to your tweets. And the thing that I really like is you can have different themes for those different user accounts, making it hard to send in a tweet from the wrong account. Next, I do want to show you Mint Finance, but I don't want to show you my personal banking information. So I'll just show you around some of the features. For instance, you can pin banking information right to your start screen with these live tiles that show you your budget and your transactions from multiple different accounts. Showing you a screenshot of the app now, you can see your spending by category with this pie chart, some alerts and advice, and balances from the different accounts that you'll have. You'll get an overall view, an overall budget uh, for the month. It shows you your progress, what areas you need to maybe spend a little bit less, and what areas you can spend a little bit more. The service is completely free. Sign up for it at mint.com and download the app. Bing Translator is a text and voice translation application, which is free. It's great for businesses and also great for anyone, really, who needs to communicate with someone in a language they can't speak. The app can speak the phrases that you type into it for you for certain languages. It's as easy as entering the text into the field and tapping enter. For certain languages, you can actually download the language pack so that you can translate between those two languages offline. Um, translation will always be more accurate if you are connected to the internet though. There are numerous languages available, even Klingon. Unfortunately, Klingon is one of the languages where pronunciation is not available. There's even an augmented reality translation feature built into this app. Just point the camera at the text you need translated, maybe it's a menu, and the translation will appear right on the screen in front of you. Next, if you guys like YouTube, you need to check out Hyper for YouTube. It is absolutely the best YouTube application available for Windows 8 and RT. All the features that you would expect and need, and even a couple extras, do appear in this app. It's easy to browse through your different channels. Everything works like it should. You can view all the feeds, the activity, uploads, playlists, favorites, and the about page. You can pin a particular channel to your start screen if you really want to keep up with it and you can of course manage your subscriptions as well. Here I'm creating a custom column that's going to populate with videos that I care about. So I search for Surface Pro 3, I'm just adding a couple of filters here, and it's automatically going to populate this category or this column here with videos on this specific topic. After you start playing a video, if you tap the home button in the top left corner, the video will continue to play in the top right corner. You can then pause it or exit it. And then you can select other videos and add them to your now playing queue. That is an awesome feature. Next I want to talk about Touche for YouTube. This app is nowhere near as comprehensive as Hyper. However, there are some nice and innovative touch controls I'll just pull up one of my own videos here so you can see what I'm talking about. One tap pauses the video, another starts it playing again. If you press and hold, you'll be able to see the seek bar, and sliding your finger to the left or right will scrub through the video, and it's extremely quick. A simple pinch gesture will control the volume of the app independently of system volume. Again, this app is limited on features. You can view comments, for instance, but you cannot add your own. And then there's this feature here that just shows you related videos. 
Still, I thought it was worth a mention in case you folks really like the touch controls. Lastly, we need to talk about Splash Top. Splash Top will let you control your home PC completely remotely. You don't even need to be on the same Wi-Fi connection like you do with the remote PC app from Microsoft. There's an app for Windows 8, Windows RT, and even Windows Phone. As you can see here, on my Surface 2, I'm controlling my Surface Pro 2. Free to navigate through the desktop as well. There's this button here which gives you instant access to the keyboard. And if you swipe up, you'll have a number of shortcuts, like this one which takes you straight to the home uh, screen, and this one which opens up the charms. You can switch between regular touch controls or this trackpad on screen. That's very useful for when you need to be more precise with selecting something. Splashtop can also be used to wirelessly extend your home PC's display. In case you want to learn how to do this, I recommend watching Sean Ong's video about the Splashtop app, which you can access by clicking the link in this annotation or the link in the description below. Finally, I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you found any of the content useful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already.